1. Minhejin getting reappointed as an inside director was predictable, of course she did, Hive have been tiptoeing around this for ages, dragging her through the mud just enough to look like they're doing something but never really pulling the trigger. They yanked her from the CEO chair when her shady dealings got too loud but they were never going to drop her completely, it's all a strategic wait and see game, holding on to her to keep new jeans pleased, until they've got enough dirt to ditch. Her legally without getting their hands dirty, Hybe are playing it safe, keeping her in the shadows just in case all those investigations find something solid, and when that moment comes, they'll happily wash their hands of her. As if they weren't complicit in enabling her in the first place, Minhejin should have been behind bars already if we're being real but instead, fans are still pointing fingers at Hybe like they're the devil. 2. Let's talk about Jenny and Lisa's recent stages, Jenny's always been the most inconsistent performer out of Blackpink, one minute she's killing it, next minute she's half-assing her way through a performance, barely singing live and looking like she couldn't care less, the Born Pink tour was a disaster for her, messy, bored and lazy compared to the rest, so my expectations for her Jimmy Kimmel stage and music show performances were on the floor, but to my surprise, she actually sang live, hit the choreo and sounded good, now don't get me wrong, the song is trash and very basic to perform, but I'll give her credit where it's due, she made the stage fun, seems like she's smart enough to pick an easy song so she can actually sing live, her stage presence is giving a bit of that old rookie Jenny vibe again, and maybe being solo with full creative control is what she needed, let's just hope she can keep this up because consistency has never been her strong suit and for Lisa, her. Victoria's secret performance was a major step up from the VMAs in Global Citizen. This time, we got choreography, live vocals and solid energy. Yeah, there's still some backtrack, but at least you can actually hear her now. And her outfit was breathtaking. She did a great job opening the show. She clearly took the criticism to heart and it's paying off. Gotta give her credit for putting in the effort and improving where it counts. 3. Let's talk about SM announcing legal actions against defamation of Rise and Sunghan. SM is finally deciding to lift a finger about the hate posts and defamation against Rise and Sunghan, but this effort feels like too little way too late. SM's only acting now because of the international boycott that's killing their revenue, Rise lost over half a million followers across social media, and over 120 stores worldwide have straight up stopped selling Rise merch. The fans aren't playing around, they're hitting SM right where it hurts, the bank account. And now SM is rushing to throw out legal threats like it's gonna fix their complete failure of handling this mess earlier. Where were these legal actions when those leaks hit and the poor guy was getting harassed with death threats and funeral wreaths? SM should have done something right then and there, but nope, they acted like they forgot Sunghan even existed, they just erased him from group content and practically fed him to the wolves. SM basically handed Sunghan a one-way ticket out of the group by letting the toxicity win, if they had half a brain and handled it back then, maybe he'd still be in rise but no, they're all about legal action now, when the damage has already been done. Plus, it's laughable at this point because every time SM pulls out that we're taking legal action card, no one's buying it. We've heard it all before and nothing ever comes of it. It's a broken record at this point. I'm almost convinced all this was part of a bigger plan by SM to shove Sung Han out. They can claim they tried to bring him back, but the way they handled everything, it seems like they were just waiting for the right moment to cut ties. Whether it was intentional or not, SM screwed Sung Han over but this isn't just about Rise. Anymore, it's about SM's absolute failure to protect their idols, it's about how they repeatedly let this type of behavior slide until they're forced to act. If they can let it happen to Sunghan, no artist under that label is safe, fans are fed up. And this boycott is just the start, it's not about bringing Sunghan back, it's about holding SM accountable for treating their idols like disposable assets. 4. Let's talk about SM announcing the termination of Tails' contract. SM finally did something that doesn't reek of their usual incompetence and it's almost surprising, fans were quick to demand Tail be kicked out the second his scandal broke. Which makes sense, but thinking they could just tear up his contract? That's naive, contracts are a tangled mess and the legal system doesn't work on fan outrage. Compared to past train wrecks like Jessica getting booted from SNSD and waiting a year for her contract to be terminated, Tail's situation actually feels fast, SM clearly wanted to avoid any messy legal fallout or lawsuits and for once, they made the right call by listening to their legal team instead of spiraling into damage control mode, they covered all their bases before axing Tail, which means that Tail can't sue for breach of contract or wrongful termination in the future, and that's the last thing SM wants when they're already drowning in bad press, as for people pushing SM to sue Tail for damages, that's just asking for chaos, what if Tail then decide to drag the other members into this legal mess, that would be a disaster, the last thing SM needs is to give haters a reason to stir up more guilt by association nonsense. 5. 
5050's upcoming U.S. tour screams bad timing, they've lined up an eight-stop tour from late November to mid-December, they're barely on their feet with this new lineup, and they think they're ready to compete in an oversaturated overpriced U.S. market? Absolutely not, the K-pop scene is flooded with groups doing the rounds and 5050 doesn't have the fan base or momentum to pull off something this ambitious, they're acting like they're established, but they're essentially starting over with a new crew, instead of racing into a tour, they should be focusing on building up their song catalog and solidifying their image, one semi-hit song doesn't cut it when you're trying to grab attention in a market that's already drowning in talent, they need more music, more comebacks and more time to prove they even belong in the conversation, the timing couldn't be worse either, end of year exams, Thanksgiving, people are either too busy cramming or caught up in family stuff, Black Friday and holiday shopping already eat into wallets, so throwing a K-pop concert into the mix is a hard sell, then there's one of their dates clashing with Kiss of Life, a straight-up scheduling disaster, fans are already strapped for cash and now you're splitting them between two shows? That's amateur hour, at this point, it's a coin flip whether they'll even pull this tour off without embarrassing themselves, they're not ready for this stage and diving in headfirst could do more harm than good. 6. Let's review Kiss of Life's comeback, Get Loud feels like Kiss of Life's weak attempt at cashing in on nostalgia without really committing, sure, it taps into that mid-2000s R&B slash dance vibe. But it doesn't exactly hit with the punch you'd expect after something like Midas Touch, instead, we're left with a track that's trying too hard to play it safe and ends up being forgettable, pre-release our EM was already a disappointment. So you'd think they'd step it up with Get Loud, but they didn't. The first verse starts with some promise, the guitar riffs are nice enough, but then the whole thing just fizzles out into a generic chorus, there's no memorable hook to grab you, just the feeling that you've heard this before and probably done better by other groups. The chorus especially feels like background noise to the instrumental, the hip-hop bit in the second verse does add a little flavor but it's not enough to carry the song. And let's talk about the lyrics, Kiss of Life managed to juggle between sounding sophisticated one second and completely baffling the next, typical K-pop oddness that leaves you rolling your eyes, they're good at delivering English lines but that doesn't save weak writing, Julie was definitely the standout. Her performance shows there's more potential here, but potential doesn't cut it forever, Get Loud is fine but it's far from the bold statement they've delivered with Midas Touch, Sticky, Bad News and their debut. 7. Let's talk about the X5050 members redebuting as a trio, they dropped their first teaser and the group's name is Abloom, and I really like it, it's really refreshing compared to the nonsensical group names we've been seeing lately, Baby Monster, Kepler, Meow, who's coming up with this? But Abloom actually sounds like something you'd want to say out loud without cringing. Now, despite the mess, these girls are clearly talented and it's great they're getting a second shot because at the end of the day, they were just pawns in a bigger game, yeah. I've said they had their share of responsibility in the whole 50-50 fiasco, but that doesn't mean they deserve to be blacklisted, they were naive and got played by companies who only care about their bottom line, so it's good to see them get another chance, but here's where my optimism dies, their new company, let's not sugarcoat it, their track record is trash, failed projects, scandals left and right and not a clue on how to promote a group properly. I'd love to say they're gonna hit it big, but with this company, my expectations are in the gutter. 8. Let's review Billy's comeback Remembrance Candy. The track has that cozy vibe, a smooth instrumental and a decent enough chorus, but when you're riding the hype wave from IU's involvement in the lyrics, you're expecting more than just a sonic fireplace, you're left waiting for the big moment and it never really shows up. The jazzy undertones and brass accents are cool but nothing that demands attention, it's like Billy decided to dial back all the energy they've proven they can deliver. And for what? A polished track that feels more like elevator music at a chic cafe, it's safe, way too safe, it reminds me of Lovelies, it's got that subtle refinement, but with Billy, I'm expecting more than just nice harmonies, where's the edge? Where's the punch? This feels like a filler track, it might be fine for a b-side but if this is meant to be a title track, it barely whispers. 9. Let's talk about Say My Name's debut wave way. This seven-member girl group has XI's one-member Hitomi, and they're the first idol group produced by XTVXQ member Kim Jae-jung, and their debut was flat. It's embarrassing when someone like Kim Jae-jung, who's been in the game for years drops something as stale as wave way. It's the cookie-cutter girl group fluff that could have been churned out by any no-name producer, like, What's the point of having an industry veteran at the helm if the result is just another generic pop track that you've already forgotten by the time it's over? Waveway doesn't even try to push boundaries, it's as if they opened up a 2018 playbook and just checked off the boxes, trap beat, check, bland melody, check, zero identity, double check, it's frustrating because the potential for something more was there but say my name decided to stay in their comfort zone, blending in with the endless sea of mediocre acts instead of standing out, and yeah, it's not bad per se, 
but that's even worse. It's just painfully mediocre, which in today's industry is a death sentence. Forgettable music won't get you anywhere when you've got a hundred other groups dropping tracks that at the very least make you feel something, even if it's irritation. They missed a huge opportunity by playing it safe.